WP Tonic, Episode 6. On today's show, we have Matt Medeiros, a WordPress entrepreneur, podcaster, and co-founder of the Solcom Studio. Matt started the Matt Report podcast in October 2012, and it quickly grew to the one of the most popular WordPress podcasts available. So without further ado, let's get right into the conversation with Matt and Jonathan. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, it's okay, as long as he doesn't yeah. scream. <laughs> okay, you, has he been known to scream? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, he does. You know, I've got to get limiters on my system. It's only you get me going, Bill. <laughs> it's funny. We'll do sound tests. It'll be perfect. All of a sudden, you go like ballistic. One good thing about me being the post editor, I can leave stuff like this in the podcast. Hey, Matt, welcome to WP Tonic. I'm here with Jonathan Dinwood, and I will be stepping back and letting you and Jonathan get that WordPress mindset that's so far above mine talking back and forth. <laughs> How's that? Awesome. Thanks, Bill. Okay, really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to listening to your interview with Jonathan. Sure thing. All right. Hi there, Matt. Hey, Jonathan. Good to, good to talk to you. Oh, thanks for coming on the show, Matt. Um, it's great to have a WordPress celebrity as our first guest. <laughs> I, don't know if I, I don't know if I should fall under that, that title, but okay. I think you are, Matt. <laughs> you, um, are, you know, I've listened to almost every podcast you've done. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I listened to all the back category and I've learned an enormous amount from you. So, um, first of all, I want to say thank you for doing it. Sure. You're welcome. It's good. It's good to hear that folks are actually learning from me. (laughs) They are. Um, I think um, I don't want to cover the normal stuff here. Um, We haven't really worked out completely what our target audience is, but I, I think it's the kind of business owner that wants to get to know more about web technology and have heard about WordPress mm-hmm. and they um, um, and they like um, me and Bill and how we try to communicate the, the technology in a kind of um, straightforward way. Mm-hmm. And then I think we've got, um, hopefully, I also attract the kind of designer um, person that's involved in print um, that's just getting into WordPress. Right. And I, we get a lot of those type of designers coming to the Reno WordPress meetup group, which I'm one of the main facilitators of. Awesome. Um, so um, I think I just want to initially start with the kind of business owner that um, I forgot where this term came from, Matt, but I, I love it. Um, somebody was talking, um, I'm not sure if it was one of your guests or it could have been one of Troy's guests. Um, they said that they they looking for clients that are looking, they don't see their website as a cost. They see it as an investment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's um, it's really hard, you know, you have a client, First of all, do you think um, if you're a business owner, you would be well advised to go with an agency that is in the physical facility um, of your business? Uh, you mean like a like a local presence where you can just walk into their place and and talk shop with them? Yes. Yeah. So we actually get that. Uh, we you know many of the WordPress agencies that are out there are distributed teams, um, especially the larger agencies. Um, and we have folks who are also uh, not in our office. But we, we have a local presence, mainly because we've been in business for so long in our local community. Uh, it would sort of be weird <laughs> if folks couldn't find us, uh, for better or for worse. Um, for the agency owner like me, sometimes it's very difficult because we, we are an agency and a lot of folks look at building a website as as just that cost. So they're like, hmm, I think I can buy a website today for 700 bucks uh, or 500 bucks. Let me walk in uh, to Slocum Studio and see if they'll, they'll sell me a website for 500 bucks. A lot of people have that mindset that they can just walk into a place and buy it, uh, which is not the case, unfortunately, for us anyway. So it makes it tough as the agency owner to kind of get clients that walk in and uh, especially when we've been in the community for so long and they sort of know us or they know our names or they've been referred to us by other people. And it's just like we have to take them and say, look, we're, we're an agency full of talented people. And what that hopefully translates into is everyone here has a salary <laughs> that, I have to, that I have to pay at the end of the day. Uh, what's, and, what's that, Matt? 
What's that? A salary. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. What, what is a salary in, in today's world? Um, you know, so, so there's that sort of struggle as the agency owner. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there are some clients and some clients, yes. I mean, if, if, you're, if you don't have the budget, there are definitely ways that you can make that 500 bucks work or that static cost work. Um, just, you know, forewarning that whoever you might be working with at a static cost might not be there to support you depending on their business model, you know, in two, three, four months from now. Um, they may ask you to sign a support contract, something like that. Um, but your, so your budget can only go so far. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, a very difficult area because, you know, you've got very kind of small, very micro businesses um, that um, a person might be running part time and right. in full time employment, and they are just looking for a website between five hundred and a thousand dollars. But I, I'm I'm more talking about a more established business that might have about te- from ten to twenty people. Um, why do you? What benefit do you? Uh, what benefit do you think a, a more established business gets by going to a, a more established vendor rather than going to O? deck or something yeah so the way we onboard clients to our uh, services business and it sort of helps the same thing we just talked about so it's going to sort of you know i hate to use the word but it's going to weed out the low budget or the 500 hundred dollar client we have uh, a belief document right we have this belief that we send people before we even get to discovery and how are we going to build your your project we have this belief document that breaks down the the values that we have as an agency, right? And what our mission is, how we want to help people. So letting them know that it's not a quick process, it's not a fast process, and that we want to be an integral part of that that strategy that you're approaching us for. So if you're bringing us a new website and it's for e-commerce, we want to be a part of the talks of marketing, of advertising, of promotion, because without knowing that side of the house, we really can't build you something effective. So we kind of talk about all that stuff in the beginning and make sure the client can understand that's the type of people that we are. And that's the benefit uh, of working with an agency um, or maybe a team of freelancers or it could be just one freelancer. depends on what their beliefs are or what their values are. Uh, And hopefully the client can see that. So the client knows that these people are invested in me. They're not going to be cheap, but they're going to be invested in me. They want to see this project or our business thrive just as much as we do, we do. Now, sometimes that can scare, and majority of the time, that scares the business owner. Um, but if it's a team of people, if it's a, if it's a more established biz- business, then there's some kind of marketing person there. There's, you know, the stakeholders might be the CEO, um, but, you know, the, the marketing team is running it. Uh, there is a budget set for it. So as long as we can work in those parameters, then then they're happy. And the number one thing is most customers come to us because of, unfortunately, bad experiences with freelancers. They've sort of dropped off the map or they're in over their heads and they can't build this e-commerce site for them that's supposed to be doing a million dollars a month in revenue. They're just like, well, I don't have the time for this. I didn't expect this. And then they realize, wow, you know, we made the wrong choice or they put us on the wrong platform or, you know, this kid just went to college and <laughs> he's nowhere, he or she is nowhere to be found. Uh, we need a team that's going to be responsible. Yes, um, I think that <clears throat> happens a lot. And because of my my age, uh, I, I think that's one of my strengths because people know, and I've been in business in web development and consultancy for over six years now, Matt. Yep. Um, but I think I'm still amazed, um, even quite experienced um, individuals that have been in business quite a while and been quite successful still do that. They hire somebody um, which they really don't have any track background or and um, they don't do a, enough studying, not to become a do it themselves but to have enough knowledge where they can make judgment calls about the right people to hire right absolutely and i think that's one of the good things to listen to your podcast or um wp tonics and there's a number of other podcasts that are kind of focused at the business owner and about um because i think they're such a great educational resource aren't they yeah yeah i mean uh you know the one of the there's a big a big pie, uh, as I like to refer to it as, is a big pie of how the Matt, or why the Matt Report started. And one of them was going to the WordCamps 
and seeing all of these folks asking the business questions. But back then, no one was really talking about it. Like, you know, late 2011, early 2012, there was no uh, real focus on business and WordPress and combining the two. But you would see the freelancers going out there and asking the questions, you know, uh, in a design track and just saying, hey, uh, this is great. You just showed me how to do something fun in in Adobe Photoshop, but how did you sell your clients? (laughs) And I just saw those conversations happening and that was part of it. I said, I'm just going to start start talking about this because there are there's a need for it right yeah. so that's how it all kind of spun up on that side of it now um how how because obviously um there's two i love it kind of discussion points that come to mind about when we were discussing the previous topic um and one of them is um how you're you're just a wordpress shop mm-hmm. you just do themes custom plugins but your passion for your um, agency is you your tool is wordpress that's correct isn't it yeah so on the agency side we will um we do you know f- design and development for uh, for wordpress uh, but specifically with that consulting spin on it right so you're going to come to us and you're going to say i need an e-commerce site and i need to achieve this and we do the whole discovery session and uh, it's more of like it's more consulting than it is building stuff, but then we'll get into building web applications and things like that. So there's there's a couple large agencies, digital, they, they classify themselves as digital agencies based mm-hmm. in Reno, and they're between the 20 to 40 person size. And they do a lot, um, there's a couple of those, <clears throat> and there's a couple of two to three person shops in Reno. And basically, if you want it done in Drupal, we can do it in Drupal. If you want it done in Joomla, we'll do it in Joomla. If you want it in WordPress, we're WordPress experts. Whatever you want it, we're we're the experts. And I suppose I am attacking that in a way, but I don't want to overemphasize it. I don't think um, you can be an expert in all these platforms. And some of your experience, you were utilizing Drupal. I think that's correct, wasn't it? Yeah, so uh, when I started out early, it was, um, but when I worked for another company, we had a a Drupal uh, agency. I don't want to say it was an agency, but it was, they they were building stuff on Drupal. They weren't really an agency. They were just a sort of a tech company that were doing those things on on the side. Yeah, well, you get a lot of that, don't you? You get a lot of that. But what do you think? I don't think um, you can be an expert on all these different platforms. What's your feeling about this? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's one of those things where, like you know, like anything else, if if you are pulled in too many directions, then you're not just focused on that one uh, that one thing. Uh, and in this case, the technology Drupal versus WordPress. If you're a big enough agency, yeah, you're going to have a team of people. But are those people really going to be you know passionate about just WordPress or just Drupal? Are they really spending their time in the community? Um, if they are, and they are, and and it, and it is a you know a real passion of theirs or something that they are really hyper focused on they're more than likely not they're going to be ra- rather expensive <laughs> right they're going to they are going to be um you know an agency that probably the most that you'd you'd be finding that you know the bigger companies going to work with like a microsoft uh like a new york times like an espn something like that um but yeah it would be tough to kind of split the focus between drupal and wordpress and and really do them well um but i've seen it done yes on the flip- on the flip side, there are really big agencies, um, and they're probably going to want to be involved with more than just the technology um, and just have larger budgets. So, I th- so yeah, it, it could probably get done. Yep. Um, like w- your family owned a car dealership. You were very established in your local community. You, you and your father had a lot of connections mm-hmm. in the business community, and I, would, I surmise that you utilize those connections when you first started your agency but then you've um i've noticed you you put a lot of review tutorials on youtube i think there was there's been a slight break but you seem to have gone back to that as well but you seem they seem very you know they're very good to start off with and they're very professional um was that did you go down that path your you and your agency because it, it's been a good way of publicity and it you've actually got clients through that activity yeah so it's a great question the um 
the Slocum Studio YouTube channel um, is probably now at like 4,500 subscribers. We've been doing it for a couple years um, for the review stuff, uh, for some web marketing stuff. And there was a point where we were doing uh, a WordPress news weekly, uh, Week in WP, uh, that we were doing for a little bit. And sort of the idea behind that is that's all started when we launched our theme shop. And that was one for for attraction to the theme shop, right? And, and just doing doing video and doing reviews and social that way uh, to drive eyeballs to, to our um, theme shop. It did find us um, some clients. And that has worked out okay, but it's not our primary channel for bringing in like custom work, although it does get us uh, theme sales and hopefully uh, plug-in sales. Uh, one of the things that was a failure in it was when we started to do the Week in WordPress news show. And I, and I had uh, this grand idea of, well, our clients are going to want to know about WordPress. And what happened was when I when I did that show, it was it ended up just being a lot of like inside baseball talk. Like it was just like, you know, I'd have other WordPress people on and it was just like people were talking about, you know, either like high end development stuff that my clients would never even listen to. Or it was just like, hey, you know, when we were at that WordCamp, it was a good time. And uh, how about that sort of after party we went to <laughs> or whatever? And it was just like gossipy inside baseball stuff, even though was, we were trying to do headlines, news headlines. And I, and I ended up killing off the show because it wasn't getting the right audience, right? So yeah, I mean, the, the, it, it's also a great, although it hasn't really ever mattered, it's, it's always been sort of that social proof that says, hey, we need to build a WordPress site. Uh, are you, do you guys know WordPress? And uh, we can say, well, yeah, number one, look at our portfolio. Number two, um, you know, we, we do have one of the more popular YouTube channels just talking all about WordPress. Um, so it's, it's also some social. So it builds leverage. your online credibility as sure. an agent, basically. Yeah. But as a, yep. And you get a bit of direct um, clients that have seen you, but it's more of establishing the yeah. credibility of, of the shop and the agency. Correct. Well, yeah, I thought you were going to say that. Um, so I think, but it's also the amount of time it takes, isn't it? Because um, <laughs> yes. um, everything you do, you do very professionally, Matt. Um, and I don't think people realise the amount of time and effort it takes. But I thought that was interesting. But I think a, a lot of, um, I think if, if you've got a reasonably successful business and you're looking for growth, I think the only way you're going to get growth, um, if it's a phys if you're a physical retailer, you get growth by opening other stores. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a business to business, or you don't want to open more stores, you've got to go to the internet, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And I think you know you've got your really small micro business where they just want to get a website up, but anybody that's been more successful in business, they they're going to have to look at the internet, you know, website, social media, email marketing, and I don't think they they really care about the technology platform, do they? They just no. want a result, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something that we sh that you know we're always going back and forth on. It's something that we haven't completely mastered because on the agency side, where we we're we know that there are bigger WordPress projects rolling out and there are companies investing in WordPress even more. We want to attract that market. At the same time, there's lots of money to be had in, in doing digital consulting, right? Getting um, e-commerce up, getting a marketing site up and doing it right without, it, without even having to mention WordPress, nor does the client care. Uh, so that's something that we're always sort of flip-flopping on. And it's, uh, it's tough. It's not easy. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the client, even when the client wants WordPress, they might not care how we code it, right? <laughs> even though we're putting the effort in and we're doing it the, well, the right they, they way. They want a return on investment, don't they? They Matt? just want, yeah, they just but want they the tend, ROI. They, what they, um, I don't know what you found, but they underestimate even if you're committed that and you, they're paying you a reasonable amount so you can be committed, it's going to take longer and it's going to be harder, isn't it? That's correct. Um, I think what you're talking about is the, you know, I think there's the real low end and then I think there's the middle company that, that's profitable that can be from five to 20 people. And then you've got the bigger 
um, companies which like um, Ten Up are, are going right. for, right. and I, I get in the impression that you would like your own agency to get into that top end a bit as well. Yeah, we we service um, some good some good sized startups in in the Boston area. Uh, we do a lot with some local universities, uh, so those are uh, those are really good um, clients to have, and we and we continue to uh, to outreach to find more of them um, in those in those verticals. But again, because we are a local shop and we are sort of embedded into the community, one of our biggest sort of <laughs> content marketing things that we do locally is literally a uh, printed tourism guide for uh, South Coast Massachusetts, right? So that's our content marketing that people get in this local in this local area. Um, it just so happens to be a printed piece. Um, so we get a lot of business from that, though they're not huge accounts, um, but uh, they're certainly not a five hundred dollars well, site. Hey, Matt, this is Bill. I've been listening in. You just yep. said on something that's really important. One of the side things I do, being a design, build, construction, having in-house marketing, is mm -hmm. we've helped local politicians get elected. What we sure. found is exactly what you just said. If you can get some print, traditional media, and yeah. drive them to the site. I mean, we send out like 40,000 pieces. We'll see that site skyrocket with yep. hits, and they'll stick. If you get, and they yeah. can collect their email and all sorts of things. So it's a, you still have to combine that local or that traditional media in with the new media. Absolutely, because yeah. folks, folks. I need think to that's make that really way. interesting, Matt. Because I, I find with a lot of the di with the WordPress crowd, um, the di I call them digitized crowd, they 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 tend to stick their nose up and they tend to discredit um, what I call um, traditional media. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, if you're talking about a coherent marketing campaign, I think it, the real success. I think the real successful ones um, have a mixture of online and traditional media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at like speaking from your or referring back to your previous question about growing uh, a business in our case as an agency and everybody has a different approach. So every founder has a different approach. Again, we come from the sort of the business sales and marketing side of it. Somebody like a Jake Goldman is a technical genius. So he's very developer oriented and he can build super large sites for people while he's sleeping. So he has a different mentality the way he approaches it. For us, we're saying, well, how do we grow our business? Well, we don't leave any money uh, on the table. And one of it is not just the site, but it's the marketing, it's the consulting, it's the support, it's a support contract, it's hosting. For us, it's also selling themes and plugins to have multiple channels. And then of course, our printed piece um, is just another thing. Like we understand how to do this. We understand how to market it. Let's not you know, snub our noses at it. Let's, let's go after it. Let's do it smart. It's a tourism piece. It only prints out once a year. It's 40,000 uh, copies. And we just partner with, with our own partners, right? With, the, with our own universities that we work with, with other businesses. And they like that. It's a, it's a complete circle. Um, and when people look, come to us, they say, well, you've got experience in, in all areas, right? And it, and it helps. And we're not uh, snubbing our nose at at everything, um, you know, we have to uh, for the real low dollar stuff that just we just can't simply do. Um, but yeah, we we look at everything as as opportunity, and we'll test it out for a little bit. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't. the, the um, not the low low stuff, but uh, uh, the smaller jobs. Um, as long as you don't get the expectation of the client is dealt with, mm -hmm. and you don't get scope creep. Um, right. That that kind of lower medium can be more profitable because you, you're you know the boundaries of what you're quoting for, don't you? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, I think the other, I think the challenge for WordPress is it seems easy. You know, um, even if you're if you're a medium sized company, you know, you. you um, I see. I see themes. There's been a lot of WordPress. There's a duality. There, mm -hmm. there seems to be great benefits of what WordPress, but there can be um, the hit, the, the less beneficial side to it, mm -hmm. like a, a theme that's not really that well coded. Right. Um. So your site is dog slow. Right. Um, <laughs> um, plugins that conflict. So the actual website. It's even worse. It doesn't break it's right. just um sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't right um this side of wordpress and don't get me wrong matt i love wordpress but it some of these things i don't think especially um the kind of internet marketing 
hardcore mm-hmm. crowd that say go to Odeck and just get somebody from India, get something right. thrown up. Um, <laughs> right. But I don't talk too much because they obviously I've got my perspective and my biases. Mm-hmm. But as you know, I, I've utilized a lot of themes and I've knocked them about and I look some of my early work and I just cringe. Um, and I know better now and I, I know who to work with and what I'm looking for and I've got a lot more experience. But do you think there's um, a lot of propaganda about WordPress and sometimes it should be toned down a little bit? Uh, it's a good question and, and something that I know I go back and forth on on my own podcast and the folks that I interview. I think that if you're in the WordPress community, you probably won't see it. Uh, and that's what you just said about having other internet marketers see WordPress as a low barrier to entry, but also understand that it powers 22% of the internet. They look at that as massive opportunity. And a lot of folks will, unfortunately, ex exploit that for, you know, for their own profit. Right. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough for the consumer. And again, what, what's the challenge for, uh, for WordPress in the future? It's the challenge of the consumer or the person looking to launch their new business on WordPress um, to weed that stuff out. Um, and it's going to be tough. And I know that a perfect example in the conductor plugin that we're building, what I'm doing th- with that is you can now build very content rich websites without knowing code, right? So for the, the real hardcore WordPress people out there, it's like a great way to make, make your own WordPress loops and output the data, right? So you could take a membership site or a real estate site and say, give me all my real estate listings, spit it on this page and put it in this display. Um, so I recently did a, a little quick blurb on that and I said how to build a $30,000 site for 300 bucks. And a lot of my friends... <laughs> A lot of my friends of WordPress were like, oh, like, really? Like, you know, people are like, oh, you know, that's, you shouldn't say things like that. Well, number one is we've been building $30,000 sites using this technology. So I know I can literally build a $30,000 site with this technology. And guess what? It's not, and this is my challenge of marketing it, it's not a ploy It is a tool that we use because that same tool is now leveraged by the customer because the customer can now use this technology to build out landing pages and build out other, either like in the case of real estate, they can build out other real estate pages. Um, So not only can we leverage it to build sites faster and more efficiently, but it also gives the power of WordPress into the hands of our customer that they've never had before. But people don't like that marketing lingo. And you know, I mean, you know, my stance is sure. I mean, again, I came from car sales and I, I come from running a business and just trying to get out there. So yeah, I, I think it's a legitimate thing for me to say that you can build a $30,000 site with this for 300 bucks, you know, and I, it depends on the person, depends on the marketing, depends on the message. But um, as long as people can justify uh, their statements, then I think it's all, I think it's all good. But if you had somebody coming in and and well, Matt, typical uh, internet I thought I'll be honest with you, Matt. I'm prepared to accept that because you're saying it. Yeah. And <laughs> um, I, what I mean by that, Matt, is that I get the feeling you're in in this for the long term. Exactly. Um, and I've listened to a lot of your podcasts and you're a pers- my feeling about we haven't met personally, but you're a person of credibility and honour. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of other people, if they'd made that statement, I would have just dismissed them out of hand, Matt. Right. <laughs> um, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but I do, um, I think rapid prototyping, you know, that's lead pages, isn't it? There's a number of those tools. So what you're proposing isn't outrageous, I don't think. Right, right, yeah. Um, is it interesting? Um, one other area I'd like to talk to you, how do you deal with... Um, WordPress and um, you know the balance between um, a client that really needs an app uh, or they come in to you and say we we want to um, we want an app for the iPhone and Android but what they really need is a, a decent website that's responsive yeah. and how do you how do you explain what you know when it's appropriate to have an app um, and do you deal with that side? And what's your experiences of working with as a WordPress shop uh, with, with the reality um, of apps and mobile technology? Yeah, so I probably have an ace up my sleeve that maybe some, a majority of folks might not have, but I've worked on a project uh, before with another company that built an iOS app while we were building them a WordPress site. 
and they used uh, probably one of the top iOS development companies called, uh, of course, now I'm going to forget the name of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have the proposal from them, source bits. Uh, we have the proposal from them, and their They're proposal. Cheap people, that. Yeah, <laughs> there. I mean, and the and the proposal was uh, like a hundred thousand dollars minimum. There was uh, options for them to take equity in in this app and all of this stuff. So that's our ace. Is when people come to us and say, "Hey, we want a, an iOS site, and I can show them," uh, you know. Uh, what is what a breakdown from a real iOS, pure iOS development agency is going to charge you versus maybe we should just take a step back and discover this project a little bit more and maybe we understand that everything you're looking for can be done, like you said, in responsive um, and just well designed for different viewports and just well thought out design versus investing in an iOS. Now, if they do want to take that, and they say, no, no, uh, like we just launched a site today, which is a, a tourism site for another local magazine um, in the state of Rhode Island. They, same thing, we want an app. And I, we showed them that we can do geolocation uh, through HTML5 and all this stuff and just load responsive for tablets and phones and make it look different in those different environments. And they were like, sold, right? We can do this at a fraction of the cost. You've proven the technology, let's do it. Um, so that's sort of how we combat that. Though, the folks that now are coming to us and say, hey, like these folks, we might want an iOS app in the future. Um, well, we've got things now like AppPressor. Um, the folks uh, behind Web Dev Studios um, are pioneering that. And that's a, it's a, that's it's a, a very interesting product. What's, what's your yeah. feelings about it, Matt? I like it. I mean, I like it. It's, again, it's, it's a tool. I mean, it's not a complete, you know, it's not going to be something that takes you from start to finish. It is a tool that will help you get further, uh, faster, um, you know, and, uh, for a few hundred bucks, you can get that framework ready to go and plug things in like your, you know, access to the camera, access to push notifications. And it just, it's a tool and it's going to get you, get it done faster. A lot of freelancers look at everything really. And they say, geez, I got to pay 400 bucks for this plugin. I'll just figure it out myself. But by the time they figure it out themselves, they've already burnt 400 bucks of their own time. I, I uh, think personally it's, it was into, a, is the, for ambition, yeah, <laughs> for audacity and ambition of a plugin, yeah, uh, I think it's still my top plugin in yeah. those parameters for the past six to eight months. Right, and absolutely. It, and the developers did get a bit of criticism about certain aspects of it, which I thought was a little bit unfair from the WordPress community. Yeah. Uh, the WordPress community is a funny, it's a funny beast. <laughs> it a, certainly is. You, you don't know if you're, you don't know when you're poking it and you don't know when you're petting it. Uh, uh, can I just ask one more question? Yeah, yeah you know, uh, let me chat in here. Jonathan's going to have one more question. We'll finish up in the next two minutes. But, you know, having an, a fresh outside perspective, because I came back from my other job, other business in 2012, getting into WordPress, I have a different perspective than you professionals have been in a little bit, much longer in your, the technical side. But uh, it is a unique personality culture you might say and it is connected i mean the top people are, know each other across the country and right. the world i'm always looking at it from the marketing side now because yeah i think marketing for me is what makes our businesses run right i agree right um i don't know if you're aware matt but um um i've just in the process in the next couple of months of launching my own SaaS product okay um, and I've utilized um, WordPress mm -hmm. um, to build, um, to, to ut utilize it as an application framework. Mm -hmm. And um, it's taken me over a year, and uh, it's been a bit of a experience, back to say the least. <laughs> I believe uh, it. <laughs> I'm a mar I got in, um, I'm a marketer, kind of front-end developer type, Um I wouldn't say, and I learned a bit of PHP because of WordPress, mm -hmm. but I've been working with some hardcore developers and that's been interesting, working on my own online product. Um, and like I say, it's taken me over a year and a lot more money than I thought it was going to do, <laughs> Matt. So um, what's your feelings? You know, to me, you know, um, to me, there's two, obviously there's other programming languages and there's other ways, but to me, um, if you're building a SaaS product, there, there, there seems to be either PHP and WordPress or you're going to go down the Ruby on Rails route. Mm. And I have 
done some front end development work with Ruby and Rail teams, and I know how much they charge in the Bay Area, mm-hmm. and and you know the kind of nightmare that Ruby and Rails development can get can be with all these gems and yeah. Um, yeah. incompatibility with versions of Ruby and Rails, mm-hmm. and so do you really think? that in the next year, 18 months, that WordPress can be a real alternative to building a SaaS application and going down the Ruby on Rails route? Yeah, I mean, from the under the hood, like real technical stuff that we're already seeing, you know, is uh, like a lot more JavaScript coming into, um, you know, the foundation of WordPress. Uh, You know, folks are, like we talked about before, uh, you know, is is this an app? technology or is this just a blog technology and we're really seeing it um, starting with content you know the thing is and we get into this with clients all the time that even if you know folks that go out and they build sort of let's say they go out and they build a Ruby app or they maybe they build just a, a standard like we see a lot of people coming to us just custom PHP apps that MySQL backend custom PHP and then they start asking the questions like they build the app they build their their custom functionality and then they say all right I need to do some. I need to do some SEO. I need to do some web marketing, or I need to start doing e-commerce or membership management. Like I need a user to sign up, and I need to say that if this user signs up, they get charged fifty bucks a month. But then, what, what about if I have bulk users? Like maybe I could sell this to a school and a thousand users, and I give them a volume discount. Then they start having to think of all of this stuff that they haven't thought of about the marketing and business side and the transaction side, and that's where WordPress is really going to shine because you have these tools available to you. And uh, number one, WordPress is great for membership management, passwords and roles and all that fun stuff is baked into WordPress. That's a hurdle onto itself if you've built your own custom app. And then when it comes time to doing, you know, membership style stuff with air quotes in the air, um, there are plugins and things you can hook into that you can charge the recurring fee for this user set for that user set for these bulk users and then forget the marketing side it can't be touched because all the seo stuff that you can do with wordpress number one the blog and publishing media then you start looking at this custom homebrew app and you're like oh man i really should have started this on wordpress um you know and that's that's where we see um the biggest opportunity to start your starting that app on wordpress and for the foreseeable future i mean i think it's only going to get better yeah, and um, my experience of um, working with Ruby on Rails developers to get a medium project, you're looking at twenty five to fifty thousand dollars. Right. Um, I've done it around ten to twenty thousand. Yep. Um, but it's been an education, Matt. Yep. Well, Matt, um, I thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I, I've tried to ask you some intelligent questions. No, and, you certainly uh, did. How <laughs> do you think I've done that? Yeah, I'm I'm sweating over here. I've sweat through my shirt. So, well, well Matt, Matt, I you usually dumb. dumb down the show. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm the, I dumb down. I ask the dumb yeah. questions that the average yeah. the, consumer, the marketing, small restaurant tour business yeah. guy wants to know. That's my yeah. job. Yeah, Matt, how can people contact you? Yeah, so uh, mattreport.com, uh, find the WordPress Entrepreneur Podcast and conductorplugin.com. That's, that'll be the new plugin that we're rolling out for uh, making those complex sites a little bit easier for and, developers. And uh, Matt, who would you suggest that we ask to come on the show next as a, our star uh, yeah. guest, Matt? That's a great question because I asked that question. You folks should probably talk to Ben Fox is a pretty good guy. Um, he can give you some great insights to rolling out his new startup, Sidekick. Oh, um, folks. Uh, so I definitely reach out to him and see if you can touch base. I recently wrapped up an interview with him and it was it was tremendous. So I'd say Ben Fox. Oh, thanks, Matt. Uh, we'll sign off. Sign off, Jonathan. Yes, we'll sign off. Who are? Who are? 